these fantasies of owning like a thousand bottles of perfume and the thing that keeps me from heading in that direction like an insane person is picking up samples testing things out and having my heart broken because they're disappointing as fuck i really hope every time i buy a sample that i won't like the fragrance i sort of am looking for magic but i'm sort of looking for disappointment because i don't want to own all the things who has the time who has the money who has the space so in today's video i'm going to talk about some fragrances that i tested in the month of april that gave or didn't and I'll let you know what I liked what I came away excited about and wanting to add to my collection and the ones that were just meh let's talk about it because maybe you're considering some of these fragrances and I can help you out with my two cents let's get into it <laughs> Hi, I'm Janique and I'm doing my best to keep my collection in check and one of the ways I'm doing that is by sampling more and more things and not just blind buying everything especially when they're crazy expensive because there is nothing more heartbreaking than blind buying a fragrance that you built up in your head as being perfect trying it out and it being good but not for it all good I'm looking at you gentle fluidity gold don't come for me can you do me a favor? Can you like the video, subscribe to me, please and thanks. You don't need to wait till the end of the video to do any of those things, I promise. I make amazing points and I'm adorable all video. All video. Looks like I lost my favorite size. Start off on a positive note and talk about the new black opium black opium le parfum and i want this to set the tone to let you know that i'm basic as fuck because i love this fragrance so much so you should know that if you're coming in here expecting avant-garde and for me to like look down on black opium that's not what's about to happen here's the thing i tested black opium more than once and i immediately immediately in my body fell in love as somebody who is obsessed with vanilla fragrances they got three different types of vanilla in that shit. It is vanilla absolute, bourbon vanilla, Madagascar vanilla. There's some other things we don't care about them. There's some coffee, we care about the coffee. The coffee and the vanilla together is a more gourmand version of black opium. I should put it out there. I have the original black opium. It is not my favorite fragrance. I'm not hating on it, but it is not the thing that I reach for day in, day out. I'm not obsessed with it. I'm not going out of my way to wear it. I've always just thought of black opium as a fragrance that's nice that i enjoy sometimes but it's just not something that i cape for i fucking cape for black opium le parfum if you love heavy sweet vanillas this is that i want to just say that again if you love heavy sweet vanillas this is that and i love this so much it is currently at the top of my wish list it is overruling all the things because i just love how heavy and thick it is and i'm not in a rush because it is not a summer fragrance it is very much a fall winter fragrance i have a little bit of time before it is needed necessary but i'm gonna put in work with this when the winter comes because they just did it correctly they just did it right and i've had people say that it's too heavy on the vanilla it is too gourmand it is too sweet it does not have that balance that nuance it's essentially vanilla on steroids which basically means it's it's amazing like the fuck <laughs> anyway let's move on the most disappointing fragrances that i tested was sunset r from goldfields and banks and i was excited about this one because goldfield and banks usually does right by me they do fruity florals in more interesting ways but this one was not it this is the kind of fragrance that is really fun sweet pretty you'd wear it wearing all pink down in miami on a girl's trip at the club it is a fun flirty fragrance but it is so basic it's essentially raspberry with a bit of jasmine there is some pink pepper or ginger that makes it a little bit more interesting and there's some cashmere wood and benzoin in the base that's about it it's very straightforward it's pretty one-dimensional it's not super exciting i've seen a lot of reviews where people love this fragrance because objectively it smells good but for the goldfield and branks price tag I don't think it's worth the investment. I think if you want this kind of scent profile, you can find it in just about any celebrity fragrance or any Juicy Couture bottle. And I would skip this one, honestly. And I was generally disappointed with this. Speaking of disappointing, let's talk about L'Artisan Parfumier's Tonka Blanc. Um, this perfume wasn't really doing anything. Um, it was just generally unremarkable across the board. And none of the notes were singing or pushing or 
anything. It everything, every every note was just sort of flat. And I was confused about why anybody would make this, release this, sell this. It's just, I don't understand. Here's, here, I, I don't know who this is for. So let's talk about it a little bit. It has Tonka Bean in there, right? That's the main note, Tonka Blanc. It's the main note, right? The Tonka Bean is, it smells almost like almond milk. It's very flat and sweet. That's it. There is no darkness. There's no depth. There is none of that like signature Tonka flair to the Tonka. It's just... It could be any sweet, flat creaminess, but it adds texture to the fragrance, I guess. I don't fucking care. There's also mandarin orange in this, and who? it's the only citrus, and they robbed it of all freshness and tartness. It's like candy mandarin orange. It's like orange Kool-Aid or orange $1 sweetie. Why? There's also cauliflower, which I think is meant to offer something vegetal and earthy, but it doesn't. You sort of get like a sense that the cauliflower is there, but it isn't really doing anything. So it's like you have three notes with nothing doing anything together in a perfume that is meant to do something. I don't understand this one. It sort of pissed me off because... It felt like a waste of time, not to be mean, but it was. A far more fun and exciting note, I tested out this very strange fragrance and it rocked my whole world because now a bitch I'm a cow, bitch I'm a cow, and zoologist turned me into that. Here's the thing, zoologist scares all of us because, mm, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, fragrances based on animals don't sound like a safe bet, but however, on the other hand, these fragrances, the ones that I've tested, the, this one in particular is such a vibe. So let's talk about it. I'm going to go into the notes. I'm going to go into the notes. But before we get into the notes, I'm going to tell you what it smells like to me. It smells like mm, milky green tea, a little bit herbal with sugar in it, y'all. Milky green tea, a little bit herbal with sugar in it do i need to say more i'm gonna say more but do i need to say more it is lovely no it's cow i could have started off with a different fragrance like b or seahorse or whatever but we started with cow so we knew we we're gonna deal with milk and the thing to note about the milk in it is not full fat milk it's not heavy thick milk it is like two percent milk there's something kind of watery about the milk it's real light it's really light. And then it has a sweetness about it. For a while I was like confused. I'm like, what is making this sweet? Is it fruit? Is it vanilla? What is making this sweet? And I figured it out. It's not, it's sugar. There's something really flat and straightforward and to the point. It smells like, it smells like milk with sugar in it. It's lovely. And then we have this addition of these like competing green elements. So it, to me, it smells like you have these really like pronounced greenness. You have Lily of the Valley, you have Jasmine, you have all of these like green elements, right? That have more of a cut grass smell. There's a little bit of that. There's sage in here, which smells almost like almost herbal and savory and minty. It's beautiful. And then there's also this element of what smells like mate tea to me all together. It's if you love that kind of combination of the warmth and the depth of herbal green tea-like smells with just this sort of watery milkiness so nothing too heavy, nothing too wintry with sugar, really flat sweetness. It's very straightforward. It's very addictive, warm, comforting. They have convinced me. They have won me over. I want to try so many more fragrances from them now because I'm so impressed with this one. It is very gourmand. It's not super perfumey, but it wears beautifully. And if you love your lactonic fragrance and you don't want anything too heavy, then this is a fantastic one. And I really, really, really am impressed with the zoologist and I'm looking forward to trying more from them. Um, Young Pistachio Gelato is incredible. I am not on the fence about this. I am not arguing with anybody about this one. I love this fragrance so much. I really, really do. Now, let's talk about it. Now, I understand why the gourmand girlies were angry about this one because the name promises perfect gourmandness, right? Yum Pistachio Gelato reads like it should be the epitome of like gourmand goodness, and it is not that. It sort of straddles 
fruity florals and gourmand and sit somewhere in the middle so that if you don't love florals or fruits in your fragrances you are not gonna love this one and if you don't love perfectly gourmand you're not gonna love this one but if you enjoy all of that then this brings everything together in a nice cute icy package that i think is wonderful now the performance trash yes I was gonna take it back I'm not gonna take it back it's not great it's like vanilla 28 performance and you wish it lasted longer because you won't work your way through that bottle real fast because it just does not last on the skin past four hours if that however the smell of the fragrance makes it worth it to me the thing that's most significant is the smell of iciness. It smells like gelato or the texture and the experience is very much like ice cream or gelato or sorbet. It feels cold, which is wonderful. The booziness from the rum comes out and the main thing you get in that opening is tart citrus. It, you have the sweetness, the sweetness is very pronounced. You expect the sweetness, but the tartness on the back end is really, really nice. It offers a whole bunch of balance to this fragrance. There's peony in here and peony offers like a kind of haziness and a kind of softness and like it blunts sharp edges in fragrances in a way that I think is really nice without making Making it powdery and the dry down is like full-on gourmand it like leans into gourmand in the base with the marshmallow and the cotton candy and overall everything over everything just working from the opening to the base we have that nutty pistachio that really offers like a lot of balance this is a lovely fragrance that I know there is a little bit of controversy because some people love it, other people hate it. I am squarely in the love it camp as a fruity floral lover. I feel like this was made for me. Yeah, I get why the gourmand girlies are a little disappointed. As a floral and a fruity floral lover, I am obsessed with this because it's fantastic. Speaking of cooler fragrances, Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Blush. It is so similar to Young Pistachio Gelato. It's striking, especially if you're testing them together. I was shocked by how much they had in common. Yes, they have a lot of overlapping notes, but I just didn't expect the experience of them to be so similar, especially because I wasn't really as excited about Good Girl Blush because of Rose Fragrance. And Rose, even though I like it, it's just not my favorite note. I'm not gonna go out of my way to try Rose Fragrances. But I got my hands on a sample and I tested it anyway. And I was really, really impressed with it. I really enjoyed it. And it's a fragrance I would love to have in my collection. So what is it? It opens up very similar to Young Pistachio. I think Young Pistachio is a more complex fragrance in a lot of ways, which means that it might turn off more people as well. And I think it's easier to love Good Girl Blush, but it's also a little bit simpler. So in the opening, we have a lot of bergamot. So very, so some sweetness, but a lot of tartness from that bergamot, which is really, really nice. We also like Young Pistachio. We also have Peony in the mid. And that's doing the bulk of the floral work. The rose in here is very understated. So if you're not a fan of rose, this is not really going to impact you. Like it's barely doing anything. The peony is doing a lot of the work like it is in Young Pistachio. It's doing a lot of the floral work in that fragrance as well. So we get this kind of romantic, hazy kind of feel out of the fragrance. Like a romantic filters over everything. Feels very fantasy-like, which is really, really nice. And in the base, we have vanilla and tonka bean, which adds a lot of body and a lot of heft and a lot of creaminess to the fragrance. It feels, you know, sort of ice cream-like. It feels very gourmand in a lot of ways and it balances out things with those florals. So like I said, it's very similar to Young Pistachio. I'm not sure anybody would need both. I think, you know, I think they're both very pretty. I think the bottle on Good Girl Blush is really, really sexy, as are all of those heel fragrances from Carolina Herrera. So I really enjoy this one I think it's very pretty I think it's really you know fun and I think it's a really great everyday fragrance and most importantly it performs significantly better 
than Yum Pistachio. I would say you can get six to eight hours out of this if you spray it on skin and on clothing. In a way, you can't get the Kaylee fragrance to work. So there's that. If you like that kind of scent profile and you want really good performance, I think this is a great option. And also the bottle. The bottle is fire. One of my favorite fragrances from all the ones that I tested was Maison Crevelli's Amber Chromatic. And y'all, this was such an experience of a fragrance. And that is sort of how it is with all of the fragrances I've tried from them. It's either a love or a hate. There is no in-between. They take you on a trip and you either want to go there or you don't. And this was no exception. So I'm just going to describe the experience of the fragrance. And I'll go through some of the notes. And hopefully that's helpful to you in sort of picturing what this smells like. So when you first spray the fragrance, it's an overwhelming greenness to it it's almost bitter it sort of smells like you're in a jungle there's like a lot of petrichor there's white dirt there's earthiness there's rain there's greenness there's bark everything is around you it feels a little claustrophobic and heavy there's like a heft to it it doesn't feel like a light green fragrance it feels really heavy and hot and it's really really interesting and for me as somebody who loves a green fragrance who loves earthiness and petrichor this for me was a fantastic opening and i wasn't expecting it to go where it went so let's go on to the next phase of things then we get a lot of pepper right that almost smells dry it kind of smells like salt and sand and pepper. It smells really spicy. There's a lot of incense in here and that comes through in the mid in a way that I think is really dynamic and unexpected, right? Because we go from this green wetness to this almost like dry pepperiness. I don't know. <laughs> then in the dry down, we have this almost like not animalic it sort of smells like sweat and sweetness so when i picture it i'm like it's like you're in the desert and it's hot and you're dancing and it's sweet out and there's incense in the air there's something almost primal about this fragrance it's it just it feels really confusing and contradictory in a lot of ways and i don't know how to describe this for anybody it's it's a trip it's an experience this is not a safe blind buy by any means i would recommend anybody interested in this test it out first this this review is not helpful to you you need to go try it out i will say the my in like my first reaction when i tried this was yeah this is not fucking boring like this is an exciting fragrance they took a whole bunch of chances which means that a lot of people won't love this but for me i was just really like intrigued by it i thought it was really like sensual and sexy and hot and it was just kind of sticky and it didn't sort of feel like your traditional perfume like a lot was happening and i thought it was really really exciting that's the word it's just like a very exciting fragrance and i need y'all to know about it y'all i don't think penhaligons is made for me this is like my third penhaligons fragrance that i have tried and it always ends the same where i'm like yeah i get it it's beautiful it is great on paper i feel nothing every single time so let's talk about how fetty now how fetty is a rose meets citrus there's some cardamom some saffron in the base we got some tonka some vanilla some oud it's woody it's floral it's beautifully blended it smells real classy there's something really heady and intellectual about it it's a stunning fragrance and i don't fucking care it is so boring to me i felt nothing i'm like yeah uh, technically on paper this is great like I smell it and I know what it smells like and it's a nice fragrance it meets the brief it fits the bill it feels very classy and there's nothing surprising or exciting or fun about it and this has been my experience with all of the Penhaligon's fragrances there's something about the brand that feels very aspirational right and you want to be the kind of woman or at least I do who like gives penhaligons but i just don't think i'm its audience i think i'm looking for more something a little bit more off the cuff something a little bit more fun something a little bit more out there if i'm going to be paying penhaligons money i want some more novelty to my fragrance and there's as pretty and as beautiful and as much as they put 
great <laughs> quality ingredients in their fragrances i don't give a fuck i'm bored and so yeah i don't think ben Huggins is for me i have a few samples left i'm gonna keep trying them and maybe i'll run into one that rocks my whole world but i'm losing faith i'm losing hope yeah what was not boring <laughs> What was not boring was Wilhelm's Opus Core. I love it. I hate it. It's both. I had such a visceral reaction to this fragrance because it was so confusing. So it opens up as like a pretty basic citrus, sweet, sweeter citrus fragrance. A slightly too sweet citrus fragrance in the opening, but I wasn't mad at it. It wasn't anything that like offended me. It has some bergamot in the opening, some more citrus fragrance. It was fine. I was into it. It was fine. We get some sweet raspberry. I get it was fine. And then out of nowhere, mm, they snuck in a whole bunch of aldehydes on me. It just got fresh and soapy out of nowhere. I was like, where? Why? How? What the fuck? Y'all need to understand how much I don't like aldehydes. I make sure I don't add ald aldehydic fragrances to my collection without testing them out in these streets before bringing them home because the likelihood I'm gonna like them is real slim and they snuck it up on me. I'm here wearing this fragrance and all of a sudden I smell like a shampoo. I smell like a raspberry shampoo out in the world. Like why? Why? I was like, what is happening right now? It just snuck up on me. Anyway. I wore it. I was like, I'm confused. I'm confused. How did we get here? And then y'all, the dry down of this fragrance is so good. It's so good. And the dry down lasts the bulk of the time. So I'm like, do I want this? Just for the fucking amazing dry down? Maybe. How did I get here? I was just hating this. I was just hating this. Anyway, it has this tart raspberry sorbet smell or raspberry like daiquiri smell it's a it's full it's really mysterious smelling it's bold it's in your face it's a little bit tart it's just the fruit in that dry down and it lasts such a long time it's so nice it's like the raspberry stays gets more complex all of the soapiness goes away and we just smell like a raspberry drink for the rest of it it's so good so i don't know how i feel about opus core it's so confusing i'm like why is the opening okay i can i can i can live with a, a basic ass opening but that mid that mid i was like i was sitting around like what is happening why do i smell like this and then it went away and gave way to something really really beautiful you know what it reminds me of the dry down of this sort of smells like donna born and roma intense that's what the dry down of this fragrance smells like so just imagine smelling like that all the time that's amazing. That smells good. I don't know. Come here. Listen to me. Psychedelic Love from Initio is one of the best fragrances I've tried this year. I am not exaggerating. This fragrance is worth every dollar they're charging for it. I've never smelled anything like it. I am obsessed with this fragrance. You cannot try it on paper. You cannot smell it in the atom atomizer. It does not do this fragrance justice. This fragrance feels like an acid trip and has a whole bunch of notes I should not want on my body. Myrrh. I'm looking at myrrh. And instead, I am... It's confusing, it's contradictory, it feels like an acid trip, but overall, it's just a very fun, it's not lazy, it's exciting, it takes chances, and Anishio did that. So let's talk about it. It opens up with a Lang Lang, which can smell like banana, with bergamot, right? The tartness is very pronounced. The sweetness from the Lang Lang, that banana smell, is also there. They're coming together and working so beautifully together. In the mid, we have Hedion, which is basically jasmine. And so this bit of greenness and freshness to the fragrance. There's heliotrope in here, but it doesn't smell like powderiness it more smells cloud-like and like it's like a hug it feels like it's encapsulating you it can feel a little claustrophobic even it feels like it's just it's it's enveloping you in this smell that is really 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 incredible they don't have any creamy or lactonic notes i smell either like coconut or tonk or something that has this really like smooth silky kind of texture and in the base we have things like myrrh and benzoin for some heft and some spiciness what it feels like or the experience of it 
is that throughout the wear of the fragrance, it's mostly the ylang ylang and the bergamot. So this sweetness and this tartness powers through. And then the myrrh is kind of sprinkled in to make it more interesting, more nuanced for it to play better. So it kind of feels like the fruit and the florals in here are dancing. The texture sits really well. It kind of feels like how lotion would sit, right? Just kind of creamy and light and just, it's so pretty. It's so fun. It's so complimentary. As somebody who loves a fruity floral, there's a fruity floral done in a way that is so unexpected and new and different that I I just can't get enough of it. My one little bit of a sample just finished so fast because I loved this so much. Am I ever gonna buy a full size bottle? Maybe someday. It's so expensive, y'all, but it's so beautiful and it deserves every penny they're asking for it. Yeah, Initio Psychedelic Love. I'm in love and it's so good. 10 of the fragrances I tested in the month of April and it was mostly a winning month, save for a few disappointments. Looking at you have fetch. You're supposed to be better. Everybody says you're better. Anyway, I enjoy testing these fragrances and now some of them are on my wish list. Young Pistachio Gelato, Black Opium, Amber Chromatic, and Psychedelic Love, among a couple of others. It was a good month for fragrances for me. I mostly go into this process hoping I'll hate everything because i don't want to grow my collection out of whack right and if everything i try i love then you know i failed because that's not the point of this but i did find some gems here that i feel lucky to have tried so i hope this was helpful to you if you're on the hunt to find you a niche fragrance a designer fragrance and looking for insight into what they smell like i hope i was able to provide that if you enjoyed this video check out my last video where i reviewed um some of the samples that I was testing at the time that was a fun video no one's watched it but it was a fun video so go ahead check it out if you haven't done so like comment subscribe do the thing show me a little bit of love again I'm Janique and most of these samples are out of my system now which was half the reason I got them in the first place so I'm feeling good today and I hope you are as well see you in the next one bye y'all see you on the mind I've been seeing great lights, but it's such a great